welcome back this is ec 253 c and this will be lecture 30. we have been studying about the assembly language uh, programming of uh, avr microcontrollers particularly at mega 328 we have studied that in an assembly language program we usually have two things we have assembly language instructions assembly language instructions assembly language instructions and then we have something we discussed last time known as assembler directives they are also known as pseudo instructions while these assembly language instructions they are actually commands or directions that for CPU what to do the examples we have discussed so far is for example add they actually tell CPU what to do like add add tells CPU to add the contents of two registers RD and RR and store the contents in RD similarly we have LDI that tells the CPU that uh, commands the CPU to load a number in in a in a register but assembler directives they are not commands for CU, CPU what are they they are commands for assembler for example why to start the program why to end the program and other things the general syntax of an assembler assembly language instruction is something like this we have a we have something known as label And then we have a mnemonic we have operands and then we can have comment this is the general syntax of any instruction the square brackets here they indicate that this the field is optional that means comment and label fields are optional in an assembly language in, in instruction in fact the operand in some of the instructions we don't have operands so operands can also be optional but in majority of the case in 99 percent of the instructions operands are present what are these mnemonics these are abbrevi abbreviations that actually represent some uh, sort of uh, command for the CPU like I have told you earlier add load immediate LDS we have jump we have also discussed NOP no operation and maybe other instructions and then we have the operands operands are actually the data on which we have to operate for example in case of add and this these operands they may be numbers they may be addresses or they may be addresses of some instruction for example in case of add these are two registers that means two memory locations where we find our operands the two numbers that need to be added in case of LDI one is the register and other is the immediate number K is some number which needs to be loaded in this RD similarly in case of uh, LDS we have something as RDK. Here the K RD is again the register, but K is the address of a memory location. In case of jump, again we have a label. Label is nothing but as we have discussed earlier, it is an address, but this time it is an address of an instruction which needs to be executed next. Why we need to why the CPU needs to jump no operation this instruction has no operand so operand is actually optional meaning in some cases there is no operand at all so you can see this operand it can be a register 
it can be a number it can be a address of a memory location of the data memory or it can be address of an intersection that the address of the program memory because in AVR we have two different types of memory we have data memory and we have program memory data memory we have discussed already and then we have this label these labels are used to refer to the instruction instructions we can uh, we can label any instruction but these uh, but most of the times we use labels only during looping maybe in jumps and calls where we have to jump to a particular instruction where we have to go out of sequence to jump to that instruction we you we label that instruction and then use that label in the jump like this or in call instructions also this comment field this is again optional this is used by the programmers to understand the program better maybe on a later day they have to understand the program so each instruction can have a co comment so that the program becomes more understandable so whenever we write a program we use something we use many software packages during writing and assembling a program the first thing is that we have to write a program we do it using an editor maybe a notepad so we write instructions the next step usually is to save this program give it some name maybe I have given it name for example my first program use an extension ASM it indicates that the program that this file is an assembly language file containing assembly language instructions whenever we write the program and then save it the next step is to feed this ASM file to the assembler it's again a program assembler is a program or a software which converts this ASM file into many files the most important of them is the hex file for example my first program it will convert my first program dot ASM into my first program dot hex also it will give a a file known as my first program dot EP we may have some other files for example list file absolute file object file my my first program dot object what are these files the most important one is the hex file it's actually which it's a file which contains all the opcodes and this file is burned into the program ROM of AVR microcontroller of the Atomega 328 microcontroller so that the uh, so that the instruction will be executed this EP file is the EP ROM file which needs to it contains some data that needs to be uh, burned into the EP ROM of the AVR microcontroller we also have object files and other files uh, these files uh, we will discuss in more detail when we uh, when we actually uh, discuss uh, atmel uh, when we discuss the these uh, assemblers and uh, editors of atmega328 apart from these editors and assemblers we also need simulators sometimes to simulate the program on the computer system before burning in our case in case of avr microcontrollers we have a software known as atmel studio IDE it has an inbuilt text editor where we can write our program it has an inbuilt assembler where we can assemb assemble the program and contain and uh, derive all these files and then it also has an inbuilt um, simulator where we can simulate uh, this program you can download this it's open uh, open source software you can download this and start writing your programs and simulating them Atmel Studio IDE so now we have discussed inside uh, inside the AVR microcontroller we have discussed its general purpose registers present inside the AVR microcontroller inside the CPU of the uh, processor of AVR microcontroller and then attached to the CPU we have also discussed data memory 
which actually consists of GPRs, the general purpose registers, special function registers, and uh, scratchpad, SRAM. Apart from these, we have some other special function registers also. One of the special function registers inside AVR microcontroller is program counter. In fact, program counter is present in every processor and what is the job of the program counter we have already discussed uh, discuss this it always points to the next intersection that the processor or that the cpu needs to be ex needs to execute that means it has the address of the instruction that the CPU needs to execute. That means at the start it will have an address 0000, so that it will fetch the first opcode from the memory location 000 from the program from the program memory 0000 and execute it, and then it will auto increment itself until all the instructions are executed. Apart from this program counter, we also have, and apart from this data memory, we also have program ROM attached to the at mega uh, microcontroller or inside the at mega microcontroller. It is actually memory where program is stored. That is assembly language instructions are stored. Or uh, in fact, then opcodes of all these assembly language in a string are stored as we have seen earlier this assembly any assembly language instructions will be translated into opcodes using the assembler then each opcode will be stored in program from something like this maybe 0e 3f 4e these are the corresponding opcodes of uh, different instructions these are the opcodes actually that correspond to the instructions uh, that correspond to different instructions. Okay. We have seen in case of 8085, this program ROM or the, the memory, it's addressed using, uh, we have something known as byte addressability. In case of 8085 microprocessor, that means each byte of memory has a unique address the first byte will have an address 0000, 0, 0, 0. the next byte will have an address 0, 0, 0, 0001 and each byte may contain these opcodes but in case of AVR microcontrollers we have something known as word addressability word is actually two bytes that means 16 bits so that means the word addressability means that in case of AVR microcontrollers, each byte of data doesn't have a unique address. It doesn't have a unique address each byte, but each word that means two bytes have one address. That means our memory is organized in case of AVR, it is organized something like this. This is 16 bits wide, that means 16 bits, that means 2 bytes, and each word has got a unique address. The first word will have an address 0000, the next word has an address 0001, this, this only for program ROM. Data RAM, that's byte addressable in uh, in case of AVR microcontrollers. But program ROM is word addressable. That is, we can access each word individually, but we can't access each byte individually. That means we can't access this byte separately and then this byte separately. But we can access them as a word. Each word has got a unique address. And why is it important or why is it feasible in case of AVR microcontrollers? Because in AVR microcontrollers, our instructions our assembly language instructions, assembly language instructions, the opcodes, they are either, they either are of two bytes or of four bytes. That means each 
assembly language instruction in case of AVR needs 2 bytes for the storage or 4 bytes. No instruction takes only 1 byte. That means each instruction will be stored in a word or maybe in two words. And at the time of execution of the program, what we are actually doing, our program counter is pointing to the each instruction and then that instruction is fetched. But this time, since the memory is word addressable, our program counter will be pointing towards different words of memory. In each word, program counter, will, um, our CPU will find a different instruction and fetch it and execute it. So, our AVR ROM memory is word addressable. Each word is uh, pointed or addressed differently and each word has got a unique address and the program counter in case of AVR microcontrollers it is uh, it is 13 bits wide that means the total memory that in case of at mega 328 in fact in uh, AVR microcontrollers we have program uh, we have program counters that may be only 8 bits long up to 22 bits long but in case of at mega 328 program counter is 13 bits long that means it will address a memory of 2 raised power 13 words and each word consists of 2 bytes that means total addressable memory will be 2 raised power 13 into 2 bytes Sorry, it is 14 bits. Uh, 14 in case of at mega 328 program count is 14 bits. That means we can address two raised power 14 different words, and that means since each word is two bytes long, that means total memory addressable can be two raised power 14 into two bytes. That means 16 2 multiplied by 16 kilobytes. That is 32 kilobytes. So the program ROM of Atmega328 microcontroller is 16 is 32 kilobytes. To illustrate how the pro program counter and uh, program ROM works, uh, let me show you an example. We have already done these examples in case of 8085, but let's rewind a bit. We have a basic program, something like this. It always starts, AVR program always starts at dot .org and it tells the assembler why to put the opcode of the first instruction. This program counter has the value 0000, 0000 at startup at power up. So we will uh, want our assembler to store the first um, opcode at memory location 0000 or we can simply write do dot .org 0 and then let me write the next instruction LDI these are the simple instruction we have discussed so far LDI R16 so this instruction tells the CPU to load a number 25 hex in uh, register 16 similarly we can have LDI R17 Again, this now uh, this instruction tells CPU to load an in a, to load a number 34 again in hex because I used the dollar sign here uh, in uh, register 17. And then I can write LDI R18 0B 0011001. Again, I am loading a number. This time I am writing in binary in register 18 then i can say add r16 r17 i'm uh, adding the contents of r17 that's i'm adding 34 to 25 and storing the result in r16 and to that uh, sum i'm also adding now to r18 First, I added the contents of register 17, that is 34 to 25. The result was stored in R16, overwriting this result. And now, I am adding this number to R16 also, and storing the result in R16. Then, I can write something like this, LDI 
R17. Now I am loading R17 with a new value, this time in decimal 11. And now I am adding this 11 also to the contents of to the previous sum stored in R16. Now I will store this sum STS maybe some for STS I will I can uh, write any memory location here for example if I am storing in into 300 memory location STS 300 and storing this sum that is R16 content of R16 and then I will use jump uh, we use it as jump as jump in in case of 8085 but here we have a simple jump that means jump to a particular memory location to a particular instruction and I am giving a label to this ABC ABC so this is my program basic program instruction like let me get these instructions separately this program we will write maybe in notepad or some editor associated with our atmel studio or some other uh, uh, notepad or some other editor then we will feed this program to the assembler what will the assembler do it will actually convert these instructions into opcodes and those opcodes will be burned to the program rom of atomega 328 microcontroller so let us see what are the different opcodes of these microcontrollers org0 it is an assembler directive so there will be no opcode for this the next instruction ldar16025 there will be opcode and in case of at mega 328 this is a 2 byte instruction that means opcode will be 16 bits long will be 32 bits long occupying 2 bytes its opcode is e205 similarly sorry e205 i will write in capital similarly the opcode of the next instruction of ldar1732 is e314 of the next instruction ldar18 is e Three, two, one, and of add is add we have zero F zero one, and then we have zero F zero two for LDA again. We have something starting with E. And we have the R1711, so we have E01B. You don't need to remember these opcodes. So the next is 0F01 again. Then we have STS. This STS is uh, this is not a two byte instruction, it's a four byte instruction. That means its opcode will take four bytes. So its opcode is 9300300. The first two bytes will have the uh, will have the instruction uh, will have the command 9300. It is STS and then the uh, 9300 is STS R16 and then the next two bytes will actually have the address why to store. Similarly, uh, similar is the case with jump. The first two uh, bytes 940C will tell us to jump. And the next two bytes will tell the uh, CPU why to jump in case of here 0009. So these opcodes will be stored in the program ROM each and the program ROM is word addressable. That means each memory location is actually a word consists of two bytes. So we will uh, need one memory location for these instruction and two memory location for these instruction so the first memory so the first opcode will be burnt to 0000 this to 0001 this to 0002 00 so on this 
7 and this one to 0, 0, 0 to 8, 0, 0, 7 and 0 to 8 because that's two word in instruction that is four bytes in instruction and then the next instruction will not be stored at 0, 0, 8 but to 0, 0, 0, 9. That's why uh, this instruction was changed into something 940C and 0, 0, 0, 9. This 0, 0, 9 is the, is the address wired to jump. So you may have seen that these LDI instructions they have somewhat similar opcodes starting with EEE. -E -E. Actually, the opcode itself shows the instruction what to do and then the operands. The operands are also present in the opcodes. So this is actually a simple program and its memory map where each instruction will be executed and then you know when we will uh, power up our at mega 328 microcontroller our program counter will have a value 0 0 0 0 it's only 14 bytes long not 16 so it will have value 0 0 0 0 the highest value it can get since it's only 14 bits long, long so it will get a highest value of F, F, F. Highest value will be one, 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 one. This is the eight bytes. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. This will be the highest value in the program counter, and this will correspond to F, F, F one. So the program counter can have in a, in case of eight mega three to eight, it can have any values from zero, 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 zero up to. 1 f f f and at the start it will have value 0 0 0 0 and if this program is burned inside the uh, inside the program rom of uh, at mega 3 to 8 the first opcode that will be executed will be e205 that means when this will be executed actually a number 25 ha in hex will be transferred to register 16 and similarly other opcodes will be uh, executed until we reach to the jump and when the jump will be executed what will actually happen uh, our processor will forcibly put this value 0009 in program counter so the next instruction that will be executed it will again be this jump that it that means it will jump infinitely so that's it about the program uh, about uh, how uh, the program how the uh, a program is stored inside a program inside the program uh, memory of uh, at mega 3 to 8 each instruction is stored into two bytes in a word and some instructions are stored as you can see here some instructions are stored in four uh, bytes that means two words so i think is there anything else for today yes there is one more thing Inside the Atmega328 microcontroller, we have the CPU and we have memory also. We have code ROM. In case of Atmega328, this code, uh, in case of any AVR microcontroller, this code ROM is internally connected with CPU using address data and control buses. The address bus, in case of Atmega328, will be 14 bits long that means we have something new from a0 to a13 and the data bus since each data byte here since each data here is two bytes long so the data bus must be two bytes long that means 16 bits long so data is from d0 to d15 because each instruction in fact each memory location here each memory location is 16 bits long so whenever our whenever the cpu sends a particular memory using these address lines it needs to fetch that the data present in fact the instruction the instruction present in that uh, memory location and each instruction is 16 bits long so the address bus where from uh, data or the instruction will come back to the CPU needs to be 16 bits long.
so this is important and also in case of avr microcontrollers we have something that we call as harvard architecture this means that the code memory and data memory are separate as you have seen and since the code memory and data memory is separate that means address and data buses for code memory and data memory are also separate so we can show a simple diagram of uh, at mega 3 to 8 microcontroller something like this we have a we have the cpu or uh, inside the cpu we have arithmetic logic unit we have program counter we have some other special function registers also we have general purpose registers then on one side it has this it has data bus this is data bus it also have address bus it also have control bus and these data bus and address bus here the data bus is 8 bits long the address bus is 16 bits long and control uh, bus and we also have control bus and the this is connected to different data memory for example it may be connected to SRAM and also this may be connected to EEP ROM or maybe to other uh, peripherals like timers and ports and interrupt units but on the other side we also have one more data bus code data bus we also have code address bus and we have code control bus that's connected to program program memory or we call it program flash rom is the flash rom actually so in case of at mega 328 this data bus here will be code data bus code data bus will be 16 bits long and code address bus will be 14 bits long so we have separate memories for data and address and this is in Harvard architecture since we have separate memories we have separate data and address buses since the data memory is byte addressable we have a data bus which is 8 bits long but in case of program pro, program rom program rom in case of avr is word addressable therefore we have a code uh, we have a data bus code data bus that's 16 bits long so i think it i think that's it for this uh, lecture thank you